Hey, it's your boy Chris, Players Pick Podcast. Here to shout out my sponsor, Road Roaster Coffee. Road Roaster Coffee makes an amazing array of light, medium, and dark roasts. My favorite is this kick ass right here. You can check out roadroastercoffee.com and use Players Pick as your coupon code for 20% off your very first order. Enjoy the pod. Pick Podcast, Picks and Perspective with Chris Johnson. Palpable. Paradox. Polarity. Sophie. Hi. Yeah. Hi. You're right. I'm good. You? I'm good, thank you. Can you hear me okay? It's all the audio. Good. Yeah, it sounds crystal clear. Yay. Oh, I like your back your backdrop. My purple. Very fancy. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty new, actually. Um, this is only the second podcast I've done in this space. Uh, and uh, it's a new house. I just moved across town. And uh, Oh, yeah. How was the move? Was it all right? Oof. Um, you know, grand scheme, okay. But uh, yeah. moving, no matter how, no matter what, it just kind of sucks. It just, yeah. you know. It's it, a bit of a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, Are you renting or is it, did you buy this? Renting, renting, I would, I would like to buy, but in this market, it's a little wonky. Uh, It's everything is great for sellers right now. If you want to sell your house, like now's a good time, but. Really? Yo, that's my boy right there. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, cameo appearance. What's up, Chris? (laughs) Good to see you. Um, Yeah. And this is, well, so this is cool too, because, uh, this is episode number 100 for me. Oh my God, really? I was <laughs> looking at your YouTube and I was like, I wonder who's going to be at number 100. That's so exciting. That's you. Oh my God. <laughs> that's so ex- Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, yeah, we just had a good, good pod last week. It's not up yet, but with Josh Travis, that was really great. Uh, awesome. and, and now uh, I've got the amazing Sophie Lloyd. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I trust that everything you you made it back safe and everything was a good trip. Uh, no, for, no, we Mar- died in in a plane crash. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just <laughs> I'll just press the end meeting now. Again, this is from the gra- this is from the grave. From the other I side. I am a ghost. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it was all good. We um, yeah, it was fine. We ended up upgrading our seats, so we got cushy seats back as well which was really nice and yeah we're still like suffering from like jet lag as well mm. like we had really bad jet lag when we came back and like we're still like going to sleep at like 2 a.m between 2 and 4 a.m <laughs> so we're working on that that's that's understandable um especially uh those long flights you know and then trying to stay up and hang out and be yeah exactly yeah we, we made the mistake we got back here at like 10 a.m english time and we made the mistake of just going straight to bed and sleeping until like 10 p.m <laughs> <laughs> now everything's so, upside down yeah exactly we are just living in chaos at the moment <laughs> mm. well hopefully it settles down at some point i mean you guys will eventually go out and stay out long enough to where that you'll mm. go to bed at a regular hour right yeah maybe <laughs> we'll, we'll see <laughs> that's the plan but i don't know i'm just mm. so tired all the time at the moment i don't know what i but mm. yeah well that's a, that's a common thing going around you know if whether you got or didn't get the covid you know a lot of people mm-hmm. have some residual effects from that yeah or definitely. the vaccines or you know different things and uh and it's a trying time in general, I think, yeah. uh, right? So, like, just the news could exhaust you alone. Oh, my God, yeah, especially right? today. Is something, <laughs> was there a big thing today? Yeah, well, in in the Europe, because Russia's now invaded Ukraine, so it looks like World War Three is going oh. to happen. <laughs> uh, I guess I haven't looked that deeply into the news today. Oh, um, yeah, surprise. <laughs> Thanks, Sophie. I'm so happy to talk to you right now. I know. <laughs> this is great. It's a very joyous point. I literally called up my parents this morning, like, I'm so scared. We're going to die. We're all going to die. I was like, we all need to move to Australia because they seem like the only country that's kind of out of it. But but yeah. they're but they're in their own situation. They've been yeah, in their own. Their own Canada's yeah. weird. Australia's weird. Um, we're, we're fucked anywhere we go really yeah, yeah pretty much pretty much 
I mean, and it's weird too, because I was just, the one thing I was tuning into this morning as I got up uh, was the two, 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 like. Oh yeah, like right? the, it's like the reverse date or whatever. You There's a palindrome it. and it's like, it can look the same as upside down and backwards. Yeah, and, it's like the only time that will ever happen like in our lifetime. So that's Yeah, there was, special. I read uh, the last time that Pluto was in alignment and not the date thing, but like, Pluto's in a special spot right now, I guess. And the last time it was there was July 4th, 1776. So like, wow. like Independence Day, <laughs> like was the last time, like for the, when the country kind of started or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, crazy. Yeah. So when we got our freedom mm -hmm. from you um, was the Sorry. last time. And <laughs> that was all bad. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. No, it's no, it's all good. Like we just we're we're the idiots over here that said, oh, you know, we we uh, want our independence, but we're gonna basically do the same thing over here, just call it different <laughs> things. And <laughs> who knows Silly. what's going on? <laughs> yeah, who, who knows? Who knows? Anyway, well, um, despite World War Three, despite the incredible planetary alignment, um, <laughs> it's you and me. We get to chat for a little bit. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, so I I, I was curious about like I was looking back and because I had listened to your your uh delusions EP a while back and and then um I saw I remember seeing your 2019 uh single that came out and you've got new music coming right like you've got a, a new Please. EP right yes and it can't come soon enough we've got a new full-length album our first full-length album full-length um, okay yeah and um it's think a bit different to all of my previous stuff because obviously in um the EP and with the single as well it's that was all instrumental so it was all sort of led by guitar and this album is going to be different because it's got each track maybe except one that might still be instrumental all have vocals on them and they're all a lot more like sort of band led track so that's you know it's a uh, vocal for like the whole song and the guitar solo and then sort of interacting with each other and that's something really cool because it's thing I've wanted to do for a while because that's you know the kind of music I I, I listen to if you know what I mean so mm. it's yeah been really exciting to kind of write that way I've been writing with Chris my drummer as well and it's finally sort of feels like it's coming to a head we're getting all the vocal tracks back it's sounding just incredible they're uh, all taking the tracks to like a new level and we're hoping it'll be out well we keep saying we, we're hoping and then it keeps getting pushed back <laughs> but um just because we're working and collabing with people it's just so hard to organize everything mm. but we're hoping it'll be out I think we're aiming for the to release on my birthday now which is 22nd of October I think that's the plan awesome okay well that's super cool I know that you had you kind of teased out there that you did a video with Matt Heafy and so like he's obviously one of the guests I imagine yes yes he is yeah we did a little tease there he's um he actually recorded all the vocals and stuff on Twitch and I recorded some guitar parts on Twitch as well which was uh um really really fun and so did another vocalist I don't know how many I'm like allowed to say I'm such like mm. <laughs> I've so, got such a loose tongue like I'll just I'm I'm so tempted to just say everyone but <laughs> Got it. But yeah, Matt Heafy is, is going to be on it. And obviously that's a dream for me because there's like this photo when I was recording Delusions uh, where I'm like wearing like this homemade Trivium t-shirt, like an iron that I like ironed on myself. And now it's like in the next album that I did after that, I'm collabing with Matt Heafy. So it's just been so like crazy full circle and just amazing to work with some of these people. I love that foreshadowing, that precursor like yeah. that you kind of like had this and, and you probably that version of you probably had no real clue that this was coming right? yeah exactly and that's the thing what I've always said about this album is I'm writing it for my like 16 year old self like growing mm. up like what I would like to what I would have liked in an album what I'd like to listen to everything and um the title of the album is called uh imposter syndrome which mm. is something I've spoken on my YouTube channel about before. And it's something I suffer quite badly with. It sort of falls into the category of like performance anxiety and self-doubt and everything like that. So it's sort of like, yeah, kind of an ode to my 16 year old self. And it's cool because I get to work with artists that I listened to when I was that age as well. So it's like, yeah, a really cool full circle thing. Mm. Do you feel like that's, that is really cool uh, in so many ways. Um, do you think that, there's uh, an element by, by calling the album imposter syndrome and kind of dedicating it to your your younger self. You, is that a way of kind of overcoming the imposter syndrome? 
yeah that's sort of what I've wanted to do through this is sort of go on the journey of overcoming it and that's sort of why I've because you know I've sort of grown up like my whole playing career mainly has been on the internet online and actually I had my very first gig kind of as you know Sophie Lloyd the online guitarist today two years ago so uh wow. and then I was just we were just about to you know start gearing up to do more shows and then COVID hit so it sort of continued just being online. So I've kind of built that up in my head where, you know, online you get to kind of control what you put out there. You get to like, you know, you can edit your photos, you can record, you know, 10,000 takes and no one will know. So I think I sort of built it up in my head that everyone will have this like high expectation of me that I'll kind of never be able to meet, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of something that I kind of uh, struggle with. And that's the thing that this album, I think has really kind of helped me get over. It's just just kind of like working through it. And also that's why I started my Twitch was so I can start to do some more like live streams and stuff without, you know, having that like barrier of a filter and, you know, all of that stuff. It's just sort of raw. And, you know, that's what I like to see. And that's what people seem to really vibe with. And um, all of the songs like lyrically on this album are sort of quite lends towards that, towards, you know, overcoming things in your life that are, that are difficult and mental health issues and stuff. So yeah that's really cool I can't remember if that was the question you asked but. no it's yeah no, you're, you, <laughs> you definitely <laughs> yeah you definitely addressed it it's a uh, well and and so I guess the 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 other aspect of it is that um when when you know like you said that there's an element right that you've been mostly behind this kind of fourth wall like been able to like control your environment really well so that everything comes out pretty polished pretty clean and so with the Twitch, uh, which is its closest thing to live that you can do kind of right now from where yeah. you're at doing the thing. And so it sounds like uh, it's it's kind of a good uh, place to be uh, getting used to little flubs here, like and not and, and not uh, letting that stop you and keep rolling through and stay focused on what's coming next and not. Yeah, not tripping exactly. too hard. It's right. Sort of just, exactly. It's just good. And you realize that people actually don't don't really give a shit yeah. <laughs> at all and it's, it is all kind of in your head and that's the thing you know once the album's out we really want to be able to like tour the album like UK and worldwide ideally um sure. it would be great so that's something that I'm sort of working on Twitch to kind of get over is that kind of fear of performing in front of people and making mistakes and it's definitely working a lot because I sort of have this thing where I perform live that I got like the first like at that gig I was talking about two years ago where I kind of dissociate and it kind of feels like I'm like floating away, if you know what I mean, like looking mm. down at myself. I don't really know how to explain it, but it doesn't feel like you're kind of in your body. Mm. So, and that's a shame because I know I, because I've, I've played with old bands and stuff and I've, once I get into it, I absolutely love playing live. It's so much fun, but it seems to be when it's my stuff that that kind of happens that I'll sort of dissociate a bit and I want to be able to be in the moment and enjoy it. So that's something that I'm kind of um, working on and, I hope when we tour this album that I'll be, you know, it'll kind of be like I've overcome it and um, it'll be all sunshine and rainbows in theory. <laughs> sure. Well, it's interesting that that's the, that it happens with your stuff, right? Because uh, when it's not your stuff, it's not your stuff. Right. And so like yeah. you, everybody knows what it is and you can, you know, you're doing your version of somebody else's thing. And it seems like on some hand, on some level there, maybe, because it's yours, there's a level of like, okay, I'm gonna go over here while you guys see my 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 stuff, so that just in case like you don't like it, like I'm not actually in my body. Yeah, with exactly. It. It's like I'm just gonna hide away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's 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 a good awareness, though. I'm really impressed with the with the awareness around that, and I mean, it's got to be challenging to to yeah, work well, that's with that. Sort of something else is sort of just coming to like the acceptance of like, okay, this is what it is, and talking about it as well. I feel like you know, I want to be able to kind of raise awareness about it because it is a thing. I, I feel like in like, especially like the rock music community, people don't really talk about a lot, but everyone like, I mean, publicly, but everyone I've sort of spoken to privately has all been like, yeah, that's exactly how I feel as well. So it's sort of, I feel like it would be good to like raise awareness with this album for that a little bit. So Big time. And I, you know, I have, I've said a few times, I think somewhere on the pod, but I mean, I, I've told people that Back in the day when I was running EMG TV and booking all the artists in there, mm. I saw a lot of, I mean, a lot of incredible players come in and they'd bring, you know, three or four songs 
and they'd have backing tracks every once in a while we'd have like a full band or a second member yeah but mostly it was to backing tracks and you know mostly it's a lot of shredders predominantly and um it's a lot of notes to be responsible for and <laughs> you know to be honest right like and then you have a guy that comes in like andy james like and he's one of my best examples because we're, we're close friends and yeah. uh I remember it was maybe the second or third session that we had had him there. And this one, I mean, oftentimes he would do two takes, three takes, and he'd be like, okay, that's good enough, mate. You know? And we're like, yeah. all right. You know, and we might, he might go oh, that one little spot after this little thing, just, just pull that one little note out, you know, or whatever, yeah. because it, it, I did it almost perfect. But then there was one track. I don't even remember what track it was, but I'm, I think we, we, we like, got to like tra like take seven or eight which was the first time i'd ever seen that happen with him and he was just yeah. a little fatigue you know it was like the third track of the day he'd already done three versions and and people on the outside when they see the finished product they're just like oh wow what an incredible it's true he is an incredible player but the work that goes in yeah to... they, don't, they don't see like the, the no. takes and stuff they think it's just <sighs> like oh one take that's it <laughs> yeah, like oh he's so good and every once in a while you know we as players you do get that thankfully right oh, every yeah. once in a while you're like oh i'm so badass like I, yeah I, and then you're like, i'm invincible i'm the best player in the world <laughs> yeah let's just call it here for the day you guys well that was the first take <laughs> yeah. of the day yeah i know i know today's great we're never doing another take again <laughs> <laughs> want to quit while i'm ahead yeah exactly that's you know and then you know you, you find out quickly at some other point in your session oh i'm still human i'm still human yeah <laughs> <You're> like, oh, <laughs> <fuck>. <laughs> um on, on the flip side you know i think that player and, and this is the thing i was actually working towards a, an, a question around this for you and i'll get there in a second but the it highlights uh the difference between a player that is predominantly improvisational and a, a player that is predominantly performance or you know prepared let's mm. say right yeah. so um like for an example my friend eric gales he does prepare but that's a guy that like predominantly is improvisational he picks up an instrument and just things come out and he is yeah. not i mean we all have that to some degree but but, but he kind of lives in that world right mm, and some amazing. players really or that's their home base. And they're just like, yeah, whatever. I, I like it to be a little different. And I'm not even yeah. trying to give you the same thing over and over again. Oh, that's so cool. I wish so I that, could be that effortlessly cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think it, it's time on the job, right? I, I mean, from what I can tell, um, and I was going to ask you, like, how much time do you spend, even in your own time, like improvising and just playing versus all the time spent working out covers and writing your original music? Like, is there a significant time in there? Because I saw this recent, there's two videos ago, you, were, you posted this older improvis improvisational, oh, yeah, yeah. and I thought it was really good. And I was like, ah, oh, <laughs> I kind of feel like, I feel like there's something that was there that, you know, you don't get as often because it's usually somebody else's kind of. Yeah, thing, definitely. Right? Like, I think, I think that's something that I definitely need to make more time for. And I'm sort of planning to do now is, um, I think, yeah, I put so much work into sort of YouTube and stuff. It's like where I kind of have time just to sit and kind of play. And after you've, you know, sort of worked and, you know, I've been writing a YouTube thing for like six to eight hours or something in the day, kind of mm. the last thing you kind of want to do is play guitar at that point. You're <laughs> like, I just want right. to have a bath and cuddle my cat. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but I want to try and make uh, more time for improvisation. And I think that's something that I'll probably start doing on Twitch a bit more as well is putting on like a sort of 15 minute backing track and just sort of seeing what comes out because I sort of started doing that a bit in January and um, I really enjoyed it. And I actually learned so much from it. I was like realizing how things were like all connected and it kind of really opened up my kind of world a little bit for writing too. So I think it's really important to have a balance of both because most of my stuff is so prepared. That's definitely something that I'm, I need to, and I'm quite excited to kind of work on and delve into that world of improvisation. Cool. Well, I, I look forward to where that takes you because again, I thought that other video was super cool to see because there's there's lines that obviously <clears throat> that seem to have come out just like in the moment for you mm -hmm. in that yeah. little re recording. And that's, I think, you know, where the gold happens a lot of times, like you said, it opens up the well for the writing. Oftentimes you're like, I was, I was trying so hard to be so in this other realm that like now that I'm just can do whatever I want, 
like yeah exactly like your imagination kind of runs wild and sometimes it's shit but sometimes you get like that exactly. little gem in there <laughs> oh man i i'm so glad that i'm by myself 90 percent of the time when i'm playing because oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just piles of shit it's just piles exactly, of shit it is <laughs> I'm but just... if you dig through that shit, exactly. <laughs> you get to that little piece of corn. <laughs> yeah, that little piece of corn that came out in the whole pile. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, that's so true. Um, I'm curious. Like, I mean, what was like? Where was the defining factor? Where, where, what, what was the turning point for you? Did you always want to be a guitar player, or was there some other goal in life, kind of prior to this, that you were aiming at, and then something shifted, and you? showed up here how did it happen yeah well like I'd say it wasn't really the goal to start with I am um, because you know when it's sort of I started YouTube YouTube wasn't really like a thing yet there wasn't really like a YouTube you couldn't really be like a YouTuber you know but um I always loved the guitar but I grew up in a town where there wasn't really any kind of music scene there weren't really any other musicians around so it was quite hard for me to kind of meet people and jam with people which is why I turned to the internet and started doing it on online, started posting on YouTube, and that's sort of where I found a bit of a music community there. Um, so that was always sort of something that I'd always wanted to do, and that's thing I always dreamed about. But I, you know, I was sort of, like I said, there weren't many musicians around me, so I was kind of grounded in the kind of real world. And um, I was actually going to study uh, forensic science. It's gonna start now. I can't even remember what it's called. <laughs> That's where all my brain cells have gone. Uh, I was gonna study forensic science, and I actually got a scholarship to study at a university. And um, like a week before, I sort of was gonna go, and I was like, "Actually, Dad, I think I want to do music instead." <laughs> mm. And luckily, my parents were super supportive, and um, I got into like a sort of last minute application at um, BIM London, which is the British Institute of Modern Music. Um, um, yeah, sort of the week before I applied there, I managed to get in on the, um, uh, what's it called the foundation course and yeah, that's sort of the rest is history. That's sort of when I decided to just, you know, fuck it, this is what I want to do and I should follow it, you know, now. And if, if, you know, it all goes to shit, at least I can say, you know, I tried, I did my absolute best and I had fun doing it. So that's sort of what the goal was, but, um. Yeah, I was going to be a forensic scientist. And I still might do that one day. I think I still want to go into that at some point um, when I'm a bit older, maybe. I don't and know. what, what really inspired the forensic thing? Is it like crime drama shows or what yeah, is it? Yeah, like I'm a typical kind of like basic bitch that just loves <laughs> true crime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, like I'm, I'm just obsessed. I find it so interesting how people like, it all sort of stems, I have such an interest in like psychology and stuff. So it all just stems from like how, why, what drives people to commit these crimes and like mm. what sort of, is it in their genetics or is it upbringing or like a mix of both like, and like just an analysis of like blood splatter I find really interesting as well and like the DNA stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, I just find it all really, I just always found that really, really exciting and interesting. But I was like, that will be there when I'm older, you know, this sure. is what I want to do. You know, music is what I want to do now. And in the in the interim, I'm sure there's a few shows that you're watching that keep you uh, interested in that vibe. Oh my god, yeah, I'm what obsessed. Are... I watch all these like YouTubers that like go for a true crime cases and stuff. Um, like I watch like three videos a day. It's it's oh wow, <laughs> it's bad. It's <laughs> it's an unhealthy habit at this point. <laughs> well, at least you have guitar to bring you back and keep you focused. Exactly. <laughs> you know, um, I always find when I'm doing guitar, when I'm sort of because there are some exercises you can kind of do mindlessly that just sort of like you know building muscle in your fingers or whatever that's what I'll always do when I'm watching my true crime stuff when I'm just trying to like learn my solo and just play it again and again till I've got it I'll always be watching something at the same time perfect well that's that's great that you have something though I mean it's they do help each other right it's what you're saying like yeah a little bit right <laughs> somehow I can convince somehow. myself they do yeah, yeah um well and I'm curious you know like it's one of the interesting things about modern guitar playing and being a youtuber or online personality of sorts and being a female um can brings with it its own set of challenges i'm wondering like has it been difficult to overcome like people's perception of you uh, and and how do you stay focused and not listen to like naysayers yeah. and haters yeah well you always like i feel like kind of being on the internet you've got to have a little bit of a thick skin and obviously people are always kind of 
gonna say things especially sort of about you know us being women and like the rock community and that you know we're only trying to like do it to be like sexy and all of that stuff which is true to an extent you know <laughs> hey, it's not against the law <laughs> well it's just you know it's it's thing I've always like I've kind of always had a thick skin about it so it's never really bothered me too much I find it more like quite funny than anything like I I think the most important thing is just to surround yourself with really good people who really kind of believe in you mm. and can tell you you know, no, you're actually really good. It's not just about, you know, your looks and stuff. You know, you just, I, it's about having that really good solid base there. And then the comments kind of don't really, really bother. Like Chris, my boyfriend will sometimes go through my comments and kind of like delete all like the really bad ones. <laughs> so I don't have to see them because there are times like there was a time where I, I don't know whether it's necessarily about me being a girl, but like um, when I did the, uh, I did a shred cover of Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. And everyone, it got like shared on this thing, like uh, I think it was Radio X or something on Facebook. And everyone just went in. It was crazy. It was like, you know, telling you to like kill yourself, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I've never, I've never like experienced that before. It went like semi viral on there. And I was like, whoa, that's, <laughs> that's so scary. And it got me like really, really down for, for a while. But I was like, instead, but like instead of sort of just getting beaten down by it, I decided to do. A, another YouTube video straight after I was just like, you know, don't listen to the haters. You can play over what you want, and I'm gonna shred over Justin Bieber. And I did a shred cover of Justin Bieber's "Baby," and yes. <laughs> it was awesome. So I think that's just sort of the thing: is just believing in yourself and what you're doing. And you know, it's it's one of those things. Like, I'm not gonna pretend like you know my if I have a, a thumbnail with my tits out it's gonna get more views it's just sort of mm -hmm. kind of the way the internet works and I'm not oblivious to that and I think I you know you can't pretend to be because some people are like what no it's just my thing but like it does like we are aware of it but if you know you know boobs are great boobs, boobs are, awesome. are great everyone no. loves boobs oh my god so, like, <laughs> you don't not? like boobs you know <laughs> well what the thing is about that I've you know it's if you it's there's been a handful of players out there uh that just have boobs right yeah well and, yeah that's and they, yeah <laughs> and so and so that that makes a bad name for you know oh pretty girl with a guitar or instrument or whatever but when when you show up as you are being the sexy person that you are and you bring the fire and you go yeah 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 i actually work on my craft non-stop yeah exactly the that's the thing like when someone's sort of sitting there and they're just sort of playing you know obviously are just doing it for the for the boobs it is a little bit annoying in a way just because you're like like you say it's sort of putting a bad name to it a little bit you're like I don't want people to think you know I'm just that so but I, I, I don't I I feel like I've kind of broken through that I think people kind mm -hmm. of understand like a lot of times I'll get the comments with, that was like I just came here for the boobs but actually the shredding's really good nice <laughs> see that's that's like, wonderful you're like hey like <laughs> This is the double whammy that I was going for, you know, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I can appreciate that because I think, I, I don't think that women should, if they got it and want to flaunt, it shouldn't. Right. I mean, I think that's that this is part of the freedom act, you know, part of the internet, um, you know, the few freedoms we have left. Yeah. And uh, I think that, you know, even the girl or the guy that, that has it and doesn't really have the shred or doesn't have the skills. I mean, Hey, like, it's up to you do what you want you know exactly yeah and that's want. the thing everyone's sort of like oh feminism and like like you should be like covered up or something but like mm. the idea of sort of that is just to be able to do what you want and to have the freedom to present yourself how you like and you know how I you know dress in all of my videos and stuff is exactly what I'd wear on a night out you know <laughs> so it's like it's not like I'm presenting any differently it's just how I personally like to dress and I don't think it's too risque no. I don't know what people are talking about. No. You know, some people are just like sexually frustrated and they just need to get their dicks out and fuck. It. <laughs> there you go. That you just hit it on the head. End of story, right there. Yeah. Full stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, I, I will say one last thing around that is I mean, you know, everybody, men and women have their different advantages, right? So like men can wear whatever they want and just shred shred it up. They don't have to be uh, a certain thing way right yeah and so that's like an that's an advantage they I'll, I'll, most of these dudes are in their sweatpants like you know 
barely even put together and they're making playthrough videos. Yeah, so, exactly. So that's that's an advantage where they can step up. Whereas like, you, you know, women are, are oftentimes expected to look good. And yeah. if they don't look good, then then they get complaints. But then, yeah, exactly. so, so that's weird, right? You know, and yeah. there's a lot of like different standards, like, oh, you're not wearing enough makeup. Oh, you're wearing too much makeup now. <laughs> oh, no, you're like, you shouldn't yeah. be in like sweatpants. Oh, no, now you're, you know, <laughs> yeah, you're not smiling enough. Oh, you're smiling too much. Your faces are weird. You're like, really, like, you're really looking at the camera too often. It's yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> Okay. It's like, sorry, I didn't actually get the rule book on that, but <laughs> some people just can't be pleased. Right. Um, well, I'm curious too, um, about your origins, about when you began, um, like around what time it, it, timeline in your life, did you start playing? And I'm curious about the guitar picks. Like, what do you remember about your early guitar picks? Did somebody give you one and encourage you to play a certain guitar pick? And how did you get to play what you're playing now? So I started playing, I think when I was about nine years old and um, mainly it was just sort of, I needed, you know, something else to kind of occupy my mind. Like I said, it was from a small town. There wasn't much to do. I didn't really have that many friends growing up or anything. So I sort of, my dad would always listen to these, you know, old records of like um, Rory Gallagher and Joe Bonamassa, like these like blues guys. And mm. so I got really into that and, um, you know, I wanted to get my first guitar. So we got one, it all sort of started from there. My first picks were like one of the ones that I got, you know, you get like a guitar pack that comes with like a guitar, an amp, and then like the shitty little picks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I was like one of them. I'm pretty sure it was just like the Dunlop kind of Tortex ones um, that I started with. And then I got for my birthday, I got one of those things where you can like create your own picks out of anything. Oh, the stamp. Yeah, yeah, like the stamp thing. So <laughs> I convinced myself I was going to be like this big pick designer and oh. <laughs> started like making custom picks. I'd like get a little bit of plastic and like print something out. But there was so it was just a piece of paper like um like laminated. So it was literally the floppiest thing. It was like oh. hooray. I couldn't even like pick a string, but I was like, yes, this is the future. <laughs> so um <laughs> I love it. But obviously that didn't sort of work out. But yeah, I used that for ages where I'd be using like credit, like cut up like credit cards and stuff. Um, much to my parents' disapproval. Uh <laughs> cutting up random cards and I'd be like, yes, this is gonna be the best pick. But it always sounded they sound fucking shit. Um, and then I kind of moved on and I got um a pack of I wanted like a pick tin, so I got a pack of like 50 like Gibson things. I still have the first, mm. this is the first pick tin I ever got. And I still use it oh, cool. um, just because it had so many picks in it. So I just got that and I actually ended up really liking them. I liked they were like a little bit uh, kind of smaller than the traditional Tortex ones, but not by a lot. And then um, so I was using them for ages. And then I just started um, when we did our uh, artist series run with Kiesel. We wanted to release some like custom picks with for everyone that bought them. And that's when we went to uh, Dunlop again and they sort of made... Um, some custom ones, which were which were a similar shape to the Gibson ones, but they had. Oh, you've got one! Oh, you gave it to yay! me. That's yeah. the one. I still yeah, have it. Yeah, and they come in black and purple, and they got my little signature. Oh, <laughs> it's very nice. And yeah, that's kind of what I'm using at the moment. Um, I think I might want to do a run that's a little bit thicker, and I want one that has like a bit of a grip to it because I. I really like those ones that like you can grip a little bit, not too much. Just, you know, some they have like a tiny little like hole punch in them or something. Sure. Or an indentation of some kind. Yeah. Like something yeah. like that. So ideally what I want to do is get like the, my logo kind of indented or out dented. I don't know if that's a word, but um, yeah. So it sort Raised. of becomes a bit, yeah. a bit more grippy, grippier because that's thing. I'm su such a klutz. I always drop them everywhere. So yeah, These I think that's what I'm going to do. These are like a celluloid, I think, right? Uh, just a standard yeah. celluloid. Yeah, uh, yeah. And these are like heavy or extra heavy? I think that these ones are heavy, okay. I think, but I could be wrong. No, it feels, it feels, yeah, it feels good. And, but that's, so this is, you've been playing a pick like this for quite a while now. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much like similar shape to this and sort of weights for, for ages. Um, I, I got these really, do I have it here? No, I don't have it here. I got some really cool ones. Oh, I have one from this company a while ago called Savage Custom Picks. 
and so this mm. is like a three millimeter one and sometimes Ooh. i'll use and it's really pretty they sort of make like custom picks for you and they've this is the only one i can find but to be fair they, they sent them about five years ago so and they sent three so i'm impressed i have at least one um but they sent um they sort of like designed them for you and so they you know that was when i had pink hair so they were like oh to match your hair oh, that's perfect and uh this is really good and i still use this when i'm if i'm doing like sort of um really shreddy stuff like some sweet picking or something because it's got like a really good like pointed tip and it's like i like the way it kind of goes yeah it's got a cool end. bevel yeah. yeah and um yeah so i really like that so i'm i'm thinking uh, i'm between picks at the moment mm, i think mm. so if you have any suggestions well you know i know we've talked about a couple different things um you should you know mainly like checking out other brands too like iron age and yeah some of these iron other age different... i definitely want to look at that they i've got a really couple cool. of theirs um i've got um i've got this cool like collection Ooh. here of all these picks it's like a it's like a box that you would put your rings in yeah <laughs> <laughs> Instead, oh God, that's fancy. I've got. So that, is picks. that a one pick? That orange one. That's yeah, the yeah. biggest thing I've ever seen. It's like a like a twelve mil, I think. That's just an eraser. That's like not even a <laughs> guitar pick. Like, what would you even play with that? Um, <laughs> you just play regular regular stuff. I mean, it's it, you'd be surprised that that this is made by Huff Schmid, um, and they they also make guitars and stuff too. But he makes uh, a lot of uh, cool, interesting picks, and. Because if you see the slope there, it comes down. It, oh, yeah. it ends up being a, a little more comfortable than you think it's going to be. It, the, the biggest thing is that um, you, with the thicker the pick gets, oftentimes what happens is you get a little less uh, sensitive to the tip at first, right? So you're yeah. you're kind of it's and it's you have to move a little less. Yeah. For for like more uh, for a greater stroke, so to speak. So I don't know. There's um this can be quite ergonomic for those that feel like they have some wrist or arm pain or anything like that a oh, thicker wow, pick can be helpful um it takes it takes some attenuation though like getting getting tuned yeah, into it. it um yeah i always but, uh, find that when i change picks it like takes a while to kind of get used to it a bit right and the thinner the pick obviously you the the easier it is to feel the tip it's mm. like, you know, and know where it's at in space. Yeah. I, I, I attribute it to some kind of, you know, it's a different vibe altogether. But like when you first get into a new car and you're going to drive around, you don't, and if it's a little longer, a little bigger, a little wider or something. Yeah. When you go to park, you're like, oh, yeah, it like takes really, you a while. Yeah. I'm not really <laughs> sure where the back end is exactly. <laughs> it's kind of like that with a big, thick pick, you know, so you're figuring it out. But um, the thinner it is and the super thin picks, give a lot more feedback because they f they flex and they flop yeah. and they right so you get that um i a while back though i got this super cool uh pick from iron age let's see if i can get it right here you can oh, see there's a little bit of an awesome. indentation and so that's that's like exactly what i want with like the um indentation thing yeah 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 so that that could be your logo in there right yeah and that's then they so pretty they do different kinds of tips but this is like a, a clear plexi type tip yeah very cool and this is like some sort of it's a it's a piece of wood i believe the back of it looks like a van gogh uh like wow. painting or something it looks like That's almost so like pretty. starry night or yeah some part of it. it yeah it does actually doesn't it yeah it's got the swirls That's so pretty i love that clear tip as well super cool so there's i mean some of these pick manufacturers are just doing really artistic things out yeah. there. Iron Age being one of the cool ones. Um, you know I, what really... I really want to do. What's Sorry that? to interrupt. No, what I really want to do with a pick is like, I don't know whether Iron Age would do it, but I've had this idea for a while and I've never found a company that can do it. But basically, um, it's difficult to explain without a guitar, but basically I wanted to have a pick that has like this kind of metal strip across the top mm -hmm. because sometimes, you know, like uh, Zach Wilde sometimes plays and he has a pinky ring on and he'll kind of use his pinky ring to like scratch against the strings and it sort of makes mm. that. Okay. Exactly like that. And that's what I want to do with my pick. I want to have like a little metal tip so I can like turn it around and go make some spacey cool sounds. I've got one right here. Do you actually? No, yeah. I'm so angry because I wanted to invent that. Well, no, it, don't be, don't be angry. Just be, just be glad that it exists though. So, so check it out. This, I, this is a, uh, I think I'm going to, I, I always try to remember Ricky Plector. I believe he's fr French from France. Yeah. Um, he makes a whole host of these crazy picks. Let me get this up here. 
and this this is uh got like a brass oh that's so cool so so it's like a brass uh, and you can see like it's kind of like a steampunk vibe yeah, that inside of, that's really really cool like gears and whatnot and i've i found this pick through a player called uh his name is charlie sahona are you familiar with this player I'm not no um afterwards i'll send you a link but charlie sahona um at, back when i was in at emg he might be in italian i can't remember where he's from he might not be in france but he did a, a demo video for a pick like this where he was demoing an art like an ibanez rg8 and he was doing this cool thing dan, 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 and then and he just flips it to the side and he's like pew 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 dan, that's dan, so cool. dan, yeah that's what i want to do and i was like oh no way i'm buying that pick i'm gonna do that and then i got the pick and i was like I'm not as good a player as that guy. He's way better. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it, it, it kind of exists in a way. This is a like a probably, you know, a 20 or 30 euro pick. So it's yeah. an expensive pick. What's it called? I want to, can you send me a link uh, to that afterwards? Yeah. Cause I want to, um, I want to get one. Absolutely. Yeah. He's still got uh, different versions of this. They're all a little different because each one of them has like different gears inside or different, you know, things so cool and you can see on the back here how it kind of wraps around this is like a bit of a graphite like tip it's kind of embedded inside that's really cool hugging inside the uh the metal it's beautiful isn't it as well really Really cool cool. and i think if you already have the idea of wanting to use it like that then i start here get one of these see if you do want it and then either this guy or maybe maybe uh iron age or somebody else like that would be interested in doing something like that for you um because it's unique and anytime you can kind of bring some sort of novel idea to something that everybody's like oh whatever it's just a guitar pick you're like no 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 yeah no no <laughs> secret, secret sauce right here pew, yeah. pew, pew. <laughs> i got lasers in my pick it's so um, cool <laughs> so there's that i mean i've got a bunch of interesting um things in here this is a i, I can't remember the names of uh the people Ooh, that have pretty. done it's like a crystal right it looks a little like that and the the light's a little funky in here. Um, I've, I've got more from Iron Age. They make they make uh, some kind of more traditional looking picks, yeah. but um, they're so pretty. Very cool stuff. Somebody even sent me a pick. Uh, I think this is Stone Age from Mexico. Sent me a thirty three million year old um, chrysanthemum fossil made oh into a pick. Oh my god! Wow. And it's so beautiful, like. I can't even it's so crazy and it's a, so, crazy it's like essentially stone but it was chrysanthemum uh, uh, uh apparently wow. and because I spelled my name with a y I was like ah, I kind of have to have that yeah you need that <laughs> <laughs> That's so you don't want to drop that one though you don't want to send that into pick oblivion so no no it's that's why it stays in the in yeah the, in the that's case, very wise right? Your collection's yeah. so good. I'm like, here's my green Tortex. Here's my orange Tortex. Here's my yellow one. And you're like, here's my 30 million year old. <laughs> the difference is, is Sophie, you're a really, really good player. And I just have a podcast. Hey, no, uh, you're awesome. <laughs> I've no. heard you're playing. You're fucking awesome, dude. Well, thank you. I, 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 I have fun. That's, you know, <laughs> I have fun. And out of that big pile of shit, I, I choose like 30 <laughs> seconds where I wasn't doing something absolute exactly. shit. And I'm posted. Exactly. That's <laughs> like, the oh. trick. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, you know, I actually, funny enough, I learned it from uh, trying to capture myself doing yoga stuff. Like I teach yoga on the side and cool. I was trying to like, well, nobody's around to like film me. Like, I guess I just got to set up a camera. Right. You know, and then after yeah. a while, you're like, oh, I, I realized I could take stills out of, you know, out of out of, out of a, a video and that yeah so i could capture a little a bunch of moments versus you know trying to like capture the right thing at yeah, the right yeah. time all that you just, that's awesome. just cap- capture it all and then yeah edit it later yeah exactly <laughs> that's future chris's problem <laughs> that's yeah I, this chris right now just has to play just yeah has to do <laughs> yoga just has to do the thing which which is a wonderful that's actually a wonderful thing to sort out for yourself too because it allows you to focus right yeah. on what is at hand um yeah, definitely. That's the thing I've been trying to get into is sort of like meditation and um, really like not yoga because my mom's a Pilates teacher. So we're like mortal enemies because <laughs> whenever <laughs> whenever people think my mom's a yoga teacher, she's like, oh, she gets so offended. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm not allowed to do yoga. I'm only allowed to do Pilates. Oh, but, well, um, I won't tell. It'll be our secret. You yeah, can, okay. You can come online. You can do yoga on cla- in, in yeah, my maybe class. Make you want. <laughs> just don't, just don't tell her. Just do yeah, like, hey, oh, no, I'm like, doing I'm doing this exercise thing with my friend. It's okay. <laughs> it's not yoga. Not Definitely not yoga. That's not suspicious at all. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I've been trying to get into sort of uh, that a little bit more just to, like you say, to improve focus. And I feel like that's because it is all just a mindset with like, you know, like I was saying with imposter syndrome and anxiety and stuff, it's mm. just sort of you know, you need all the tools. And I feel like that's a really useful tool is just how to manage your anxiety in that moment. So yeah, I'm trying to, I'm working on it. Have have you uh, taken some classes or have, have you no. just kind of intuitively like moved towards that direction? How yeah, has it been I've, for you? I sort of um, downloaded the, I downloaded the car map, which, um, because I was like, I was having trouble sleeping a while ago. So mm. I downloaded that to sort of help me sleep. And then I was like, oh, it has some really cool like meditations on here about, um, you know, sort of focus and overcoming performance anxiety and everything like that. So I found that really, really useful. And my sister's like a mindset coach as well. Um, she lives in Australia, but that's sort of what she does. Is she, um, you know, does all of that sort of stuff for a living. So she's uh, can point me in the right direction of things to work on and uh, talk through and stuff. So yeah, it's Wonderful. good. Yeah, at the moment, I'm still like, I don't think I want to go to like classes. Yeah, I might get to that point, right? I just sort of, it feels like quite a personal thing at the moment. So I'm just sort of enjoying doing it myself. That's actually right really, really good uh, that you that you kind of feel like it's a personal thing. And meditation is a difficult thing to have a class with. It takes, there, there's a certain type of, you know, interest that you have to have to like mm. want to travel from your home somewhere. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, right? I can't even bring silence. myself to <laughs> yeah, I can't bring myself to like go to the gym or anything. So I only work out at home still. So it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I'll yeah. Do that first and you yeah. And, and honestly, like when it comes down to it, I mean, there's a lot of ways to approach a med- meditation or meditations. There's different, you know, everybody has a different thing, but I kind of see it as, um, as, as beginning to recognize and value space. Right. So yeah. and, and we do it in all these other ways. We, we, we value as musicians, we value it in music. We value it in conversation. Right. When there's nice pauses, we can quick, you know, easily understand each other. We're not yeah. jumbling things up too much. Right. And so in a lot of ways, meditation is a bit of that. And it's because we're we're always in motion and we're always doing, especially someone like yourself. That's like doing, 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 doing. And you're yeah. building you know, your next video and your next presentation and all this so that when, uh, when we finally stop or slow down, that we we like, okay, I'm going to be intentional about the space, I'm going to insert uh, some, some time where I'm not doing that I'm just like, noticing what the body is up to noticing my breath. And even even if you don't have any instruction, even if you don't really have any, um, you just follow the intuition and just be like, okay. And you just let the breath, which is normally something that is, you know, unconscious. We, we allow the breath to now be conscious. Yeah. And that it's, little window can. Yeah. It's really do a lot. Some, like it's, I'm not quite, I'm not that good at it yet, but I'm working on it. And I think the sort of um, thing for me is like, my mind is like you say, it's always so jumbled with thoughts. Like I'm always thinking at like a million miles an hour. And it's like, it's nice to just be like, okay, I want to take a step back and just sort of focus on something else. And then, you know, I'll still get distracted and I'll be like, ooh, a butterfly. But then I'm like, no, okay, I have to, you know, sort of focus. And I think that is really kind of helping my mindset across all, all, you know, sort of platforms is um, just being able to focus and actually, you know, take note of the breath and what's, you know, yourself as a living being. Mm, mm-hmm. as hippie uh, as that sounds <laughs> i like it i like it peace <laughs> yeah peace bro um <laughs> far out dude um <laughs> yeah no that's good i think anything any element of mindfulness in our life is good you know without going overboard i think there's an element of hyper hyper mindfulness can be you know can can ramp us up you know if we're too mindful then we're mindful of being mindful and then we're like mindful of being mindful of being mindful and ah. <laughs> that can be that can be its own inception. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can be its own like weird kind of thing. Um, 
and that you know to be super self-conscious then we don't then that will stop us it can be hinder our action you know further action whereas um when we just work on that dedicated deliberate pause so to speak and uh it can allow for things to settle and the mind can settle a little bit even well in the beginning oftentimes when you when you pause your mind keeps going and you're like shit like (laughs) I thought this was supposed to be calming. I can't stop thinking, right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's the difficult one. And people, uh, most people think about it like, oh, I'm supposed to be clearing my mind right now. And so why, but and so this is, you know, you said, oh, I'm not very good at it yet. Well, even people that have been doing a long time aren't really great at it. Great at it. And oftentimes it's because they will a- attempt to remove all the stuff from their mind, which is kind of an impossibility, right? Better yet to just redirect the focus. Right. So instead of going, don't do this, don't think about a pink elephant. You know, <laughs> and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm doing this thinking about pink elephants. Instead of saying, don't do this, just say to yourself, ah, I'm just going to watch myself breathe. I'm just going to notice the breath moving in and out. And I'm going to notice the edges of my body. I'm going to notice the, the cushion underneath me where I'm sitting. Yeah, you know, and and just you notice the simplest of things, and you just, and in that way, you're being present. That's yeah, what's exactly. actually happening. Yeah, it's just about not being too strict on yourself, and just sort of being present and comfortable, mm-hmm. and not being hard, not telling yourself off because your mind wanders, but just mm-hmm. being like, oh, that's okay. Now let's you know, let's bring let's bring it back now. You yeah, a hundred percent. That's it. And I think, um, in in that process uh there's there's just room for uh like because when we're when we're when our anxiety is ramping up if there is like a feeling of like ungroundedness oftentimes it's an anticipation of some something that hasn't happened yet yeah like it hasn't (laughs) happened it's it's happening in your brain but it's not even real right (laughs) yeah exactly yeah so so that process of checking in with the body checking in with the breath oh, wait, this is what's real right now. Look yeah, around. Exactly. You're like, oh, my room is safe. Like nobody's yeah. here to get me. There's no blood splattering on the wall. Like I don't have, you know, <laughs> <laughs> to deal with a murderer right this minute, <laughs> you know? Um, so so I think that that little check-in in and of itself can help calm most people, you know? Yeah. Everybody's a little different, but. Yeah, definitely. That's cool that you're working on that. Um, I'm curious. Uh, so in the grand scheme, I noticed that you like, you do a lot of shred instrumental music, but you said it yourself. you like the music you've listened to a lot more is like, it seems to be more of a rock based thing. And I know Slash is a big, you know, a big like influence on you. And I'm curious about, um, you know, like who are some of your top favorites, like through the years growing up that you really feel like that kind of ins- continue to inspire you to pick up the guitar and write music. Yeah. Well, yeah, like you said, sort of Slash is one that jumps to mind. Um, Also, Jay Satriani. I loved his album Surfing with the Alien was the first kind of instrumental album that I got really, really into. Like I like I loved all of the songs. I would just listen to that back to back. And that was sort of when I first kind of got into like the shredding was when I wanted to learn to play the Surfing with the Alien, the song. Um, And um, so, yeah, he's definitely one, I'd say. I sort of went for a big emo phase as well. So like uh, Avenged Sevenfold, like Sinister Gates, Brian Hayner. Um, he was a big influence on my playing as well. I lo- always loved his solos. I remember thinking when I can play the solo to Beast and the Harlot, that's when I'll say I'm a good guitarist. But, you know, then I could play it and I was like, mm, nah, I still need to like, <laughs> you know, the bar always gets higher. Mm-hmm. But, um, I love, you know, I'm really, I love all types of music, to be honest. Like I mainly sort of, like my main go-to genre would be sort of rock and metal and kind of blues. But I also really, you know, I love, really love pop punk. Like this sort of, <laughs> mm. I love it. There's a pop punk song in the album, which I'm very excited about. Cool. <laughs> but um, that just because it's so like happy, I don't know what well, does always, it's not always happy, but like, it's like, it's just fun. I like, I, I just look for like fun and music that sort of, has a meaning to it. Like that's something that's really matters to me is what they're saying in the lyrics. Like if something doesn't really have, you know, much of a meaning to it, I'm not really that bothered by it. But if something's got lyrics to it, and it doesn't have to be like this deep meaningful message. Like I love Bowling for Soup and they just, you know, sure. talk about stupid shit <laughs> and yeah. I love it. 
but like you know I'm really into kind of I love rap music I love um like a lot of quite a lot of like pop stuff as well like I really like Doja Cat and um, mm, mm-hmm. people like that like just because they're quite I find them quite fun to like sing along to and rap along to so I think my and that's sort of what I do on TikTok is I'll do like shred versions of like you know pop songs and uh songs that have come out which is really fun so I think I take my inspiration from quite a lot of different um genres and I think that's sort of what I, I don't know, I like to think makes my playing a bit more unique and these songs that we're writing a little bit, um, you know, different is that, you know, it's come from so many different genres and stuff that we've kind of put them all together to create something really cool. And each song on the album is like, t- we've got, you know, a super kind of metal one with Matt Heafy and then we've got a pop punk one and we've got like a really blues one. We've got a really mm. rocky one. So it's like, it's all sort of different. And I think that's what makes it really cool. That's great to hear. I it's I have to say that when I was listening to I think it was Bulletproof Revolver, mm. it made me I go, I wonder if she likes offspring. Oh, I love there, the offspring. Yeah. There's like this like it felt like there might be influence <laughs> in that song to me. I think that was that song. Yeah, um, no, well, like a lot of my um rhythm playing is sort of influenced a lot by like the sort of punk genre as well. Mm. Like offspring. I'm a big like, you know, misfits fan and like bad religion and anti-flag and everything. Totally. Like I'm um, I love that sort of really kind of high energy, just sort of power chords, like rhythm playing, I think is just really, really cool and really fun. And like, yeah, just super high energy. So that's the thing, yeah, I bring into my rhythm playing a lot mixed with kind of like you know the shreddy stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah you know one of my favorites uh from that kind of genre and uh was is pennywise um, oh yeah pennywise were awesome dude i remember and- i i was like back in the day i was like youtube d- converting to mp3 like all of their <laughs> albums <laughs> do you have a favorite album from from them not to, i couldn't name like now i haven't listened to them in a while so i couldn't name like a particular album but um if if a song came on, there's no doubt I could sing you all the lyrics. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, my my brother turned me on to the album About Time. It's like a yellow uh, cover, and it's got like a t- like a bomb on it. Like yeah. And- well, the thing is as well, when I would Ill- like illegally download them, I would add the own art. So I just Google Pennywise and just put like a picture of their logo. So I never actually oh. categorize them into albums. Gangster. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. Okay. I'm so, I'm so don't do that. <laughs> It's okay. I, w- I won't tell them. I won't tell them. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you. What were you saying? No, I was just saying that that I just love that uh, about time album. I liked other albums too, but my it was funny because my brother was all has always been like the punk influence in my life. Yeah. He's a couple of years younger, but he uh, he and I just remember when he would get into something, he would have it on all the time, and he remembered the lyrics and everything, and he was very like just just proactive in his younger years into like being in the community and the cool things that punk kind of you know represents that's like uh you know a little bit of anti-establishment a little against the grain you know and and like and also caring for people like also like that's the part that I really kind of got from him and that album I just associate it with a certain time in my life and like it's it's most of their songs are very cool sing-along songs yeah there's lots of like whoa yeah type of stuff. <laughs> like yeah like it's good driving music you know and and they always had like a really crunchy rhythm tone and and cool and they had some decent leads too so yeah, yeah for, like they had like talented guitarists in the band too yeah so it was it was almost like it was for a metal guy I was like oh yeah like I can actually listen to that you know yeah versus feeling like I was listening to I don't know some of the other pop punk stuff it's not I'm fine with it now but back then I was a little more elitist around metal yeah well it was always like the metal heads versus the punks wasn't it that was always like that battle that's what I wrote my dissertation on (laughs) did you really (laughs) yeah it was metal heads versus punk (laughs) that's awesome (laughs) oh man can't remember any of it now but yeah it's it's really like but at the heart of it they're all just you know that both scenes are just sort of all about just caring for people like you'll always see it like rock shows and stuff if there's a mosh pit or something if someone falls they'll always get picked back up and are you okay like Mm. whereas you know obviously that doesn't happen at certain festivals that have recently happened such as astro world it's so <laughs> in sad other music scenes so it, it, it's you know it's really nice that they have such a caring community both of those so yeah, yeah. very proud to be a part of it it's interesting I, I i found that out in like i remember going to see uh like pantera and slayer uh back in the day and like 
uh, you know, definitely interested in the mosh pit, but also like simultaneously afraid of it too, because there's so many big dudes down there just like throwing elbows. And it's kind of a weird situation. If you're a dude down there, it doesn't matter really what size you are. You're probably going to get like, like some sort of elbow or head butt or something. You will get injured. (laughs) But immediately, almost immediately, they turn around and go, bro, you okay? Oh, shit. (laughs) And they're like, let me get you out of here, man. Like, it's like, yeah, yeah, you're like seeing stars. You're like, not know what's going on. And um, (laughs) thankful for that because, you know, it's not always that way. I mean, you don't always, you you hear about stories uh, where people do um, get trampled or, you know, they don't, it's not as, as, as clean and easy as that. But yeah. for the most part, I felt like there was a certain amount of, um, like, I'm going to kick your ass in this pit, but I'm not going to let you die, bro. I'm going to get you yeah, out of here. Exactly. You know? like- yeah, it's like- <laughs> exactly. It's just like this sort of friendly, I'm going to kick your ass. Yeah. The, yeah. Oh, you better get in that pit. Cause we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go. You and me. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna I'll see fucking you. go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> and like, I, I love that some of the guys get in there and it's like they purposely go opposite of the uh, the circle is going and like run, oh, yeah. smash into each other. And I know what well, a lot of times people want to come out with like a black eye. A lot of time that's the goal for some people. They're like, oh, if I don't have a black eye, I didn't like commit yeah. to the march. <laughs> I was just talking to my, my, my old singer uh, for my old band. We went to a head PE show in Seattle when he first came to visit me in Seattle. And and th- where everybody was stage diving, and I was like, "Yeah, dude!" And I, I got thrown on the stage in the back of my head, like hit a monitor and like busted open, so I was bleeding. Um, you know, it didn't feel great, but I was like, "Yeah!" And I had yeah, I had you're pictures. like, "Yeah, hardcore!" <laughs> I'm so dope. Like, check out my bloody head. Like these days, I'm like, "No, man, I don't want to go to the chiropractor. I don't want to deal yeah. with all that shit." We're too I'm old for that now. <laughs> too old. That was when I was younger, greener. You know, exactly. Maybe but you little... always see in like in like the mosh pit there's like this one like little girl as well it's just going oh my fucking God. crazier than any of the guys and all the guys are like whoa isn't that the truth that is the yeah, total truth i feel like killing it. <laughs> it's like the same archetype young small girl that is just like feels she inside she must feel 12 feet tall yeah literally because, because, <laughs> because she's acting like it and she's it's not amazing. taking shit from anyone yeah you know? <laughs> Pushing the biggest guy. Yeah, you know, she's going getting, for the big ones. Yeah, getting knocked back into the crowd yeah, and like I respect like, it, man. <laughs> good time, you got to. I mean, that's that's. I respect the craft. That's big dick energy in a small it is woman. Big dick energy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm curious, like, what what have you been listening to um, these days? Like, I mean, I mean, I know that we just talked about a lot of stuff that you listen to and stuff like, mm. but like, I'm curious about about like maybe things that we might be kind of like not you know sure of whether you listen to like do you listen to like a particular type of music to calm down at night to like um not be in the shreddy world not be in the yeah. rock and metal world like what's your kind of quieter like you know soothing music like um i'd say a lot of times like i haven't listened to much music lately while we've been writing the album and stuff and i think a lot of it is just because, like I said, when I've had like a full day of like writing and just listening and sort of, you know, we're yeah. always playing like, we're usually playing our album in the car, sort of trying to be a bit critical of like what we want to change and everything. So once we sort of finish that, like I really, really value just a bit of silence mm. <laughs> now and then. So mm. that's sort of, and like, yeah, I'll listen to like a true crime podcast to kind of mellow out and chill, <laughs> chill down, <laughs> um, which is kind of weird, but um yeah, I'd sort of like if I'm working out, I'll always work out to like more dance, you know, sort of dance pop music. I'll definitely go that route, um, mainly because they don't really do many rock workout things on YouTube. But um, really, that's weird. Yeah, like because I always do like the home workouts where you like watch someone like work out, and there's not many like. Well, I haven't unless I just haven't found them. I haven't seen anyone do. It, I see like, what you're saying with rock music. So maybe there's an opening there. Um, yeah. not for me because I can't oh. work out for shit but oh. it's like this is a, another potential career path here for you? <laughs> no I'm far too unfit for ever having a workout channel <laughs> but um yeah I'd say other than that like I, a lot of it like I felt it's almost you know embarrassing to say but like I, I haven't listened to that much music lately and I think it's just because we've been so focused on sort of the album it was actually really nice to go to when we were in America and we would rent cars and we'd actually listen to like the radio mm. and have like, you know, like the rock channels over there. Cause like in our car, we don't have like an FM radio. So like, we can't get 
um, oh, really? uh, like Planet Rock or any of the UK rock stations. So it was really nice to like sort of be in America and actually listen to like some of the new rock music that's out because that's thing I haven't really listened to. And there was like there's some really, really cool bands on there, actually. That's cool. I mean, I, I, actually, it's it's not too super surprising, to be honest. I, I, a lot of artists that I talk to that are in the middle of creation and writing and and I can imagine someone like you that is uh, part of your disposition is uh, hearing a, a song and going, ah, oh, yeah, I, I'm going to figure that out. Like, mm. yeah, right? exactly. So, th- so you're so used to tune in. You're like, and a lot of artists say, oh, I don't, I can't hear other people's stuff while I'm writing because I'll accidentally write something like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll steal a lick or something. And then every, somebody's like, that's the thing from the thing. And you're like, I, I just made it up oh, I listened to that band the other day, you know, that's yeah. what it was. You yeah, know? and we definitely did that, like, during our sort of writing. We did that where really? we, like, wrote, like, pretty much, like, three quarters of a song or something. And then we were like, <laughs> wait a minute. And it was actually, it was, like, the Marmite advert or something. I can't remember. It was, like, <laughs> <laughs> it was, like really lame. And I was like, what? Did I, I can see it now. It's like, this song is so good. It's wrapping up. Man, it's so catchy. Like, where? Oh, man. Oh, wait. We yeah. heard it all before. <laughs> it's so annoying. It's so, so we'd like combined like the mom I have it with like a Van Halen thing, but it just sounded so, so similar. We're like, we can't use it. But, yeah. um, <laughs> That's rough. I mean, it's like, how many times have you heard uh, like a Led Zeppelin, John Bonham type drum beat in mm. somebody else's thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's- you know, you're like oh they're gonna play Ze- oh that's no this is an original oh, tune this is a new song <laughs> interesting <laughs> yeah it um, is weird and that's yeah that's sort of what we didn't want to do so yeah we've mainly kind of been listening to our our own stuff which is a bit self-absorbed to say but <laughs> no but that's good i think i think it's it's you know it's appropriate you know like i think and that's part of the focus is that, you know not trying to clear that stuff out necessarily, but just re, 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 you know, doubling your focus back on the project. What is the goal at hand? And it sounds like you're doing a great job. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, like I said, also, cause it's like, we're just getting like vocals back and stuff. And like, so the songs is always sounding like different to what, you know, we put out there. What, what we get back from the vocalist is like, almost sounds like a completely new song. So it's so much fun to kind of listen to it and learn the lyrics to your own song. You know, <laughs> it's really so cool. Are, and are you helping write the lyrics? In in some of the songs I'm helping. In a lot of them, we're just sort of giving them over and um, they'll uh, come up with like the lyrics and the melody and everything. They'll sort of take on that whole mm. vocal role. With some of the songs I've, you know, sort of, I don't ever want to like be like, you have to write this sure. because I want them to have their own freedom and creative and feel like it's a proper like dual partnership for the song but like i'll i'll yeah we'll sort of have like a collaborative effort on a couple of the songs um for the lyrics and some melody parts and stuff and it sounds like they 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 know the theme of the the album too right so it's not like that's lost on whoever yeah exactly the guest is, yeah right? like so. i sort of mention it and like um that's people like some the first few uh songs I like didn't mention the theme because we weren't 100 percent sure on it but funnily enough the songs we got back were so within the theme without even saying it it's like mm. it just goes to show that like everyone has the same you know experiences with it like I was saying everyone kind of suffers with similar stuff so that was really interesting and then you know oh yeah we've got yeah, people have started, obviously we've told the theme. Some some people haven't like stuck to it. Some some of the songs are just really like hype and fun and others cool. are. So it's it's a nice mix of like everything I'd say. Yeah, the the overcoming your personal doubt essentially is what it the imposter system since syndrome um <laughs> it's a tends, difficult word. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, yes. <laughs> in, in this moment, yes. Um <laughs> But it's it, it's an, uh, a part that I mean, that's part of the human condition, you know, on some level, like and okay. because there's a uh, part of I mean, it's so, so ingrained into us, too, that fake it till you make it. Right. So yeah. while you're being uh, an amateur at something, um, it, we've kind of been trained in a lot of ways by culture, by society to feel like, well, I'm just faking it right now. Yeah, it, exactly. It, it, take the heat yeah. off of me. I'm just faking. I'm just playing. Don't take me serious, right? Because <laughs> because I don't want to be scrutinized or be I don't don't be so critical of me while I'm in my developmental phase. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. But exactly. But that's that's something that, you know, if we I don't know, if we were 
you know, held a little bit differently, you know, trained a little bit differently or had different influences in our life, maybe we would would be a little less gun shy around like just showing our raw, you know, stuff. And it sounds yeah, like definitely it sounds like you're really like kind of embracing that, you know, as you come back around to to the Twitch yeah, exactly. and all that. Yeah. And I think it's important like to show your progress as well. Like that's the thing, yeah. like, you know, all my old YouTube videos, I've still got, you know, where I was kind of learning how to play like black veil brides and stuff I definitely wasn't good I wasn't bad but like you know it wasn't you know where I would like it to be <laughs> if you know what I mean sure. I think it's important to show that progress and I don't think um as if if you know anyone is like an upcoming player and they're like oh I'm not quite where I want to be I still think it's really important to put yourself out there at the you know your level you are now and just sort of because you need to go through that, you know, you need to kind of, um, you want to document your process and you've got to start somewhere and, mm. you know, you're, you're probably better than you think you are, if you know what I mean. That's And that's mm. the thing, like you're your own worst critic. So I think, you know, don't, if you want to, you know, be a guitarist or you want to start social media, don't wait because there, there'll be no, there'll never be a moment where you're like, you know, okay, now I'm the <laughs> perfect guitarist and I can go, you know, you just need to, start it and work your way up and enjoy the journey and I think that's the most important part is just enjoying the the journey of it enjoying learning different things and that's something that I'm sort of you know starting to realize now in my new meditation brain <laughs> yeah that's uh, wonderful advice and I like the little part in there where you say you know um you know share where you're at right now and build on it right so because mm -hmm. i think that you exactly what you said there you're never going to get to a place where you're like okay i've got it sorted out like okay everybody like i'm john petrucci times 10 now yeah exactly It'll, right? like, like i said i like i said with like i always said when i can play beast in the harlot solo i'll be a great guitarist and then i can play it and i was like oh i don't think it's you know i'm not quite there yet <laughs> yeah yeah and i still like have that like i'm you know because your standards get higher as you improve which is good you know i think you don't sure. ever want to be at a point where you're like right i know everything you know you always want to be learning and um expanding your knowledge and i think that's it's just important to not let that hold you back, you know, that you've just got to, like I said, enjoy the journey that you're on. Yeah, that was that was a recent thing from my buddy Chris Shireman. He he had taken a guitar lesson with somebody badass. Maybe it was like Pat Martino or I don't know. I forget who it was. And that that teacher told him, stop waiting around to record the, the album that you think you're going to record someday. You have to capture who you are right now and move on. Exactly, like, you know, yeah. it's, it's it, you know, within reason, right? Within reason. And I thought, oh, that's great. Because I had been telling him, I was like, Chris, like, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm afraid to like actually commit to these guitar solos on these couple of songs and stuff. And cause like all my feed is like people like you and Andy James and, and I'm like, I like, but I, and he's like, bro, you're not them. You're Chris Johnson. You just need to capture who you are, do the exactly, very best yeah. you can and build, move on. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. And you're, you have your own sound as well. I think that's sort of something that I've, you know, because I always see people on my feed and I like your instinct is to compare yourself to them, you know, right. be like, oh, I can't, I, I can't play like that. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't do it. I don't want to show my stuff, but it's like, you're, no one can play like you can, you know, no matter what level you're at, no one can play like you. And that's what you need to sort of capture in that moment. And then, you know, in, when you release your second album, you'll look back on your first and you'll be like, oh, that was so cool. And now like, I've progressed so much and now here I am, you know? And I think, like you said, capturing who you are and what you're about and what you can do in that moment is really sort of important. Mm, super important. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Sophie. I appreciate you taking the time to chat and tell stories and like give oh, us some insight right. as to who you are and, and what's behind the pretty face and the shreddy <laughs> guitar. <laughs> um you know i i really no it, it means a lot and um oh, i think thank, uh, i've really enjoyed it thank you so much thank you yeah and i you know i'm so glad that we got to meet in person finally a, a few weeks ago before we got to do this that was so, so much fun <laughs> it makes it even that much more personal and um please please give chris a big bear hug for me oh i will do i will do <laughs> He's, he's my man crush over there on the other side of the pond. So uh, you're, you're his man crush as well. That oh. picture is so funny. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. It's and so good. The look on your say, face is the best. Can you send it best. to me actually? Oh yeah, I'll send it. Yeah, it's like my favorite thing when I look back like, and see your face. Like, that's my favorite part. 
hilarious. That was yeah. such, it's such a good time though. Like, thank you so much for making us feel so welcome. And like, it was a really surreal, just amazing experience. So, you know, it's incredible how hard you guys work and how much effort and like love and care you put into it. And so, yeah, I can't wait to work with you more in the future. Likewise, like we're just getting started. So lots of good things to come. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hope you have the, a great rest of your evening and uh, we'll be in touch. I'll send you that photo and I'll send you a link to uh, the, the, Rick, yeah. the Ricky, the Ricky pick. Yeah. Okay. All Thank right. Thank you so much. Got it. Have a good Cheers. day. Bye. Bye-bye. Players Pick Podcast. Picks and Perspective with Chris Johnson. Players Pick Podcast is brought to you in part by our good friends at Dunlop Guitar Products. Kiesel Custom Guitars, and our favorite new coffee company, Road Roaster Coffee. Use coupon code PLAYERSPICK for 20% off your first order at roadroastercoffee.com.